Hi there folks, welcome to Creo tutorial number six I believe now. In this particular tutorial I want to show you something like this, how to create a, an orthogonal projection, um, a third angle orthogonal projection from a 3D model that you already have in your files. So in order to do that um, we need to start a new, a new drawing. So let's click on new here this time we're going to rather than choose part as we've done in the past we're going to choose drawing that little symbol over here and the choice that we're going to have we'll call it um, ortho ortho 7 I've done a few of these and uh, it's probably a good idea to uncheck the use default template box here so drawing ortho 7 uncheck the use template the use default template and click OK. This little dialog bo box comes up and at the top here it'll ask you to find the model that you want to use. Now in this case I've cho chosen this racing car body that I've had ready but you could browse here and choose from amongst any of the parts in your working directory to create your model. So pick one that you want to use uh, and when you selected that uh, I suggest you try em an empty page at first rather than going with one of the existing formats until you know what they are. Landscape's good for us with an angle projection. And standard size, choose A4. A4 will automatically provide you millimetres for your measurements and it'll default to the correct A4 size down there. So once you've done that, click OK. And uh, what will appear will be your blank page ready for your drawing. Now the next stage would be to bring yourself in a general view. So up here on the, the ribbon under model views select general view and when you left click on that another dialog box comes up um, make sure it's no combined state and unchecked do not prompt for combined state and click OK so we're all, we're all good with that. Alright now look down the bottom here on the left hand side Creo is asking to select a centre point for drawing view, so it knows the drawing that you want to use. Now it wants you to select a point where you want on the page where you want to put this drawing. Now I'm going to go left hand side on the bottom of my page because I want to start a front view. So I've left clicked then and the drawing has appeared. It's in, um, it's in a pictorial view at the moment but that'll change pretty soon because this dialog box has come up, drawing view, and in this dialog box we've given it a view towards or defaulted to new view one it's going to call that drawing and down here um, we can choose the sort of view we want now I want to choose you're familiar with this already you've seen it in the toolbox when you click up here for views on the, um, the display let's have a look at the front view so let's make it a front view because remember third angle projection has three main views the front view the top view and the right hand side view so let's click front view and uh, the other thing that we can do here, well we need to apply this, we need to click uh, OK or apply this view. Now notice how that it's now changed to front view, but it's pretty small on the page and <laughs> not doesn't look very impressive. So let's go to scale up the top here. And uh, we can create our own custom scale. Notice that the scale defaulted to 0 0.010. Let's go to custom scale and if that's that size we'll think OK. If we double it, um, we've probably got something which is getting close towards around about the right size, so let's make it 0 0.20 click apply, it's got to be bigger now, doesn't matter that it's poking out over the edge want to make it a, bit, a little bit bigger again, let's make it 0 0.025 apply, that's better, ok so um, I'm good with that, we've got the view type, we've got the scale let's click close now notice how the, the drawing has now got a box, a highlight box around it with some handles on it. You can grab those handles when your cursor changes to that four pointed arrow. Left click hold down and you can drag the box to where you want. So let's just position it here for the moment in the middle. Now the next thing is we want to produce these other views and it's very simple to do this. And if you ever had to do this by hand it's painful to draw the projection lines up and then take measurements. Creo just does this so easily for you. and if you uh, hover over your box here now so it highlights in green the surrounding your your front view and right click you can see one of the options is insert a projection view so if you left click to select that 
straight away Creo has bumped up a view on top and this will be the top view it's guessed that I want to do a top view so you guessed right and if I left click now I have my top view beautiful now same thing I'll hover over this box where my front view is create the box right click sometimes you have to hold your right click button down a little bit for it to bring up the sub menus and insert a projection view this time create just to know that I'm going to do a third angle projection and there it is and I can drag it across to where I want it and there's my right hand side view now that looks pretty good okay there's a few things I can do with this now I'm, I like that wireframe look with shading but if I wanted to I could go up to this little tool handy toolbox up here and choose the views option and I could choose um, hidden line view or no hidden line or wireframe uh, let's just try wireframe so you get a feel for what it looks like if you click on wireframe click to my main view um, now sometimes this requires a little bit of uh, patience and a refreshing there it is so if you, you ever get that stage where you click the button and nothing appears go up to the refresh or regenerate active model button up the top here on the left hand side of the screen click it and there you go there's your wireframe model if you want to change it back to your um, you know, solid shaded with edge lines you go ahead I'll leave it in wireframe for the moment let's leave it like that okay now remember on my original view that I had I also had a, a three-dimensional uh, view of the object as well which is handy when you've got engineering drawings to see what it looks like in 3D so to bring in that 3D model we can click the uh, create a general view model again no combined states everything's fine Creo prompts me to select a point for the drawing view let's just say I, I plonk it in here and once again you can see if I move this box it's plonked in the 3D drawing view this time with wireframes in wireframe format and I can move it uh, but first let's just pick a scale we, you know it is a bit small like that so let's go with 0. Point, custom scale 0. 0.2 0.2 hit enter apply and there it is it's a bit bigger now not a panic that we um, that we have it sort of overlapping a bit because we can move all our views now if we go to our original view here left click and highlight it um, notice how it moves the views in concert so you can see the highlighting the top view so if I move the the front view Creo automatically knows I need to align it with the top view so it moves it out a little bit now I'm going to highlight this 3d view and move it up a bit out of the way so it's not touching any of the other views like that okay but I can arrange these views as I choose on the page I won't spend too long here with you on this now another thing that is probably useful for us to do is to add a few dimensions into this view so we can do this by going to the annotate tab on the ribbon so up here on the left hand side annotate and you click on dimension where I'm highlighting now and this little box pops up and yours will normally come on entity first up so leave it on there and if you choose by hovering your cursor over a line left click it, that line will highlight left click again on another line because this will be the second part of the dimension and then send a click where you want the dimension to be actually written the dimension appears like that so it's a very easy way of dimensioning um, we can do that on the side here let's go do the overall width of the object center click on the center mouse button and there's the height so we can dimension stuff um, pretty easily let's say we do this basic dimension down here uh, oh, I missed I got the wheel then by mistake Creo didn't like me picking two surfaces that were right angles to each other there we go and there's my height so I've got some basic dimension I can go through and dimension other areas as I see fit now I press as I said I prefer to have the view with the shading and edges so I'm gonna first I'm gonna highlight this um, I'll get out of dimensions uh, that's the center mouse button to get out of whatever you've selected up here in the ribbon center mouse button and click um, let's go to highlight this this box we'll choose shading with edges and left click and there it is so there's my basic shape and dimensioned 
uh, as now the next thing is to put a title box in so let's do that now if we go to table here table operates very much like Excel does you can create tables um, from uh, quick tables it has a bunch of different sorts of tables that you can choose from they can get pretty complicated or you can use them um, let's just go to creating one ourselves so you can just highlight the number of boxes that you want uh, as you would do in Excel and let's say we want to have well, four boxes there eh? well no, two boxes and I'll show you something so we position the table just by moving the left cur the cursor or the mouse button and the cursor onto the page and we've got if I scroll with my center mouse button you can see this a a table for us to enter things in if I left click I get out of the um, the highlighted section now I can add on here a column or a row if I wanted to just like you would in Excel so let's say I wanted to add a row um, notice I'm queued pick a location and table to insert a row so if I highlight a location maybe there so I've, I've just clicked on the, the bottom line of the first original table and it's popped a second row in. That sounds like a footballing term, doesn't it? Okay, um, so let's say that I want to create my typical box that we usually create at Gurrawin High School that you love to sketch. Um, we probably need to have another column. So add a column here and let's merge these two sets of cells so that they produce now this little dialog box popped up here when I click merge cells table merge um, we're going to merge rows and columns because mm -hmm. we want to go up here so let's click that now sometimes I found it there we go you gotta click sort of towards the end of the boundary where the horizontal hits the vertical and it'll merge for you sometimes you get a brown line and it's I've not found it easy there we go okay so that looks like our standard toolbox um, we're good with that so we're all happy so center mouse button gets rid of that little dialog box and to enter information just double click just like you would on a normal table inside there and you can enter text in so let's call this um, uh, drawing one okay and we'll click okay and drawing one goes in that box now I want to put my name in this box D D E you know and okay for that and we can put in something else here uh, maybe the name of the drawing so we'll call it car body car body ortho Now we can um, fit these in by wrapping text. So you know, if we right click and we can select properties and go ahead and wrap the text, but I won't spend too much time doing all that. You can work out how to do that to wrap the text inside the cells. And we have a completed drawing dimensioned in orthogonal projection with a pictorial view up on top very easily. And I hope you enjoyed that and I do hope that you enjoy the ease of which Creo can create these orthogonal projections from 3D models. We'll do another tutorial about creating orthogonal projections from scratch using um, planar views, two-dimensional views. But for now, goodbye.